Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about a magnetic circuit example. This is our example number four and in the example we will discuss a practical situation. So let's look at the problem. We have the following situation. An electromagnet is used to lift or collect load, which is actually given here in a schematic form. So this is the mov movable part, which is the load. This is the electromagnet, which is actually including a coil winding and the score will create an electromagnet. So what we want is to calculate some values in order to lift this up and also keep it in this constant position. So the following information is given for this system. We have a number of turns in the coil and the electromagnet and also the load has the relative permeability value of 6000. An electromagnet load and also the gap in this case, the air gap has a cross sectional area which are equal to each other, or is 5 times 10 to the power minus 4 square meters. The mean path length in the electromagnetic core, which is actually the mean path here, going actually in this form, is equal to 1.2 meters given by this value. And we have also the mean path length in the movable load, which is this part here, which is then 0.4 meters. The movable load has its own uh, mass, which is 8 kilograms, and we have also the initial gap distance here, which is 0 0.25 meters. Okay, that is the uh, given information. Now, what are the questions? Let's look at the questions. We need to calculate the starting current to lift the load up. That is the first one. And the second one is holding current, which is the value here to keep the load in place once it is it has been lifted and attached actually to the electromagnet so first we calculate the starting current and then the holding current so how do we start again this is all about current so we need to work towards this value of the current which is applied there due to that volt source okay let's look at the solutions the current is again given in this expression for this magnetic system so the mmf magnetomotive force is equal to the number of turns times the current. There is another formula for the magnetomotive force given here in terms of flux and also reluctance. But in this case, you can see the reluctance is a function of x because this distance can change and will change once this load will shift up. So this is now a function of x. Now, if you combine these, you can, of course, equate these to equations to each other, you will get n i is equal to phi times the reluctance. Now, in order to calculate, of course, the current, we can now relate the current to the rest of the parameters, which is then actually shown here. So the phi times reluctance over n. Now, again, the same issue as we have in the previous examples. We don't know what phi is. We don't know what the reluctance is. The only information we have here is the coil number of turns in the coil. So just 700. So we need to move on. In addition, we have the gravitational force, which works actually on this movable object. So that is given by this formula. So the gravity is equal to the mass times g. The mass is just the mass of this load, 8 kilograms. And g is a constant, which is then 9.81 meters per square centimeter, square cent seconds. So that is another um, formula. We have also the magnetic force in this electromagnetic system so the electromagnet will create a force upwards to keep this movable object of course to the positive x direction so what we want is also the formula for that and that is this formula so it is i don't i won't drive this formula but this is what we can use it is half times the phi squared and a derivative of that reluctance which is then given as a function of x so if now of course we want to have a stable system so then we need to equate these two forces to each other that means actually the magnetic force is equal to the gravity the gravitational force okay now if i now equate this you will get this informa information that is then the important equation we will use later on now, in addition let's look at also the reluctances because in order to calculate this we need to find and also the reluctance but the derivative of the reluctance so let's first look at the reluctance reluctance is now composed of three parts which is then the gap of course, two times, of course, the gap reluctance and also the electromagnetic part, the core of this electromagnet, which also has its own reluctance and also the load. So and that will be calculated using the information also given in this table. So the load and the electromagnetic part and also the gap. 
We have, of course, two times the gap, and the L gap is what we have here. This is just the initial value of this distance, which is 0 0.25. This is the mu zero, which is then the vacuum permeability of four pi times 10 to the power minus seven Henry's per meter. This is the gap of the, uh, this is the cross-sectional area of the gap. This is the cross-sectional area of this core material of this electromagnet and this is the cross-sectional area of this load. Now all of them are equal to each other. So that's actually all shown here. So just defined as A without any subscript. And we know that this is a changing parameter. So it is actually an X. So we need to now rewrite this in this form. So we can say A, A, A and just L gap replace it by X. Now we can also simplify this expression by rewriting this form. So we will take out one over mu zero a outside the parentheses and you will have this more simplified expression because these are now given in this form okay what can we now do the next step is of course we want to have the derivative of this one with respect to x so let's then calculate that and this is now very simple because this will drop off because that's just a constant and the only par par uh, part will be then this part which is just two if you derive, it, derive the, the, the differentiate this to x, you will get 2. And 2 times this will give you actually this. So this is now what we will place in here later on. Now we will still need to have that expression for flux. So the magnetic flux is then given by this expression. Actually, you're writing this one, so there's actually no, no new information. So actually, phi is then equal to ni over reluctance. We know the expression now of the reluctance as a function of x. That's here. We also know the n and we can now have also the i, the current in the formula. So if I now have this expression for reluctance in it, if I place that in the formula, I have now the situation here. And if I now move on and simplify this a little bit by bringing actually this factor in the numerator, I have now this expression, which is a little bit simplified form. So this is now the expression for the phi we will now here use and also the derivative of the reluctance also will be used here and then I have now actually necessary information then we have the following situation so just collect the information in this use this one in here this is actually the square of each part here and I will just use it here for the derivative of reluctance with respect to x now that equate to mg now what we get is then this, we can of course simplify this because the half and the two here that will disappear and I have here mu zero times a quantity squared. So I will only have the one of this uh, because I have also one a denominator and, all can, and I can then write it like in this form. Now I can now make an expression which relates i to the rest of the parameters because the rest of this of the parameters we know. The x will be of course a uh, a variable because it will be 0 0.25 and also 0 later on for holding current but that is for this expression so what we have now is the current just the general expression for the current and we can now define what the value of the current must be for a specific value of x and this is now by working out for several steps you will get this expression for the current now anything can be now substituted you can in, uh, insert here the mean path length of the core and also the load and also the mu zero mu, mu r which is just 6000 if also the mass also the constant for the gravitational force if the mu zero and also the cross-sectional area and also the number of turns in the coil now for the question a we need to have the starting current which means actually from this initial gap distance up to the electromagnet which is 0 0.25 meters up so we need to go 0 0.25 meters up that means we use for x 0 0.25 now if i insert that and the rest of the values are just given in the table we will have then this value it will be 253 amperes that is for the starting current now let's now look at a holding current and holding current means that we have a situation where the movable part is now stick to this electromagnet and it is now actually also attached to that and will be stay there so then the x x value is will be zero so x here is zero so if i now again use the same formula but then x equal to zero i will have the current is 0 0.135 amperes you can see a lot of difference in the current so once the movable object is 
stick to the electromagnet, you don't need much current in it. But the starting current is a lot. You can see the huge difference between the starting current and also the holding current. Now this example is a very practical example. You can see how much current you need to have at the start and also during the holding. And that is also very really, uh, intuitive because to move an object up, you need of course a lot of energy and for that you need also a lot of current for that to establish that energy. And once you have of course stick to the, uh, the you have your load stick to your electromagnet, then the current which you require is much much smaller than the in, in the situation where you have the starting situation. So that's actually for this practical example, example number four. If you have any questions again, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks again and see you next time in a very interesting example.